Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast is number 1,427. The topic is Q&A and the title is, Does What You Do Really Matter? So I have an online client, they asked a really fun question, so I wanted to make a podcast about it. Now, all my online clients, we do, actually, uh, so we do uh, a journal in which they can write any questions they want in a Google Doc, and I will go back through every week and answer those questions, as well as do, you know, nutritional check-ins, any kind of training check-ins, and then a lot of clients will also message me, uh, you know, an email, uh, my international clients do a lot of, like, WhatsApp, uh, they'll send messages there, some people do text messages, Instagram, so they just basically are allowed to, you know, encouraged <laughs> to reach out anytime. And I love the questions and fun conversations we get into, so I wanted to share one of those. So they wrote, I have this thought I want to discuss with you. I'm seeing people all over the internet achieve nice-looking bodies with as many and different methods as many people I'm seeing. Everyone is doing something different but achieving good results, be it fasting, type of training, etc. So I'm left to believe that the only constant in all these people's life is consistency and length of training. So I'm thinking, it doesn't really matter what you do. If you lift weights for five years, you're still going to look good. Now, there might be ways you can achieve the same results faster, I think, question mark in like parentheses, but it's weird seeing all these people on the internet have all different ideas about what is good or recommended when training. So I love this stuff, and it is very challenging because... Uh, a, a lot of factors. We're going to talk about that right now. Uh, but this client is trying to learn as much as they can on social media. So they do a lot of uh, TikTok videos. So they'll send me links for TikTok videos. And for example, they had one in which um, the guy was making a TikTok video about the importance of proper weight loading. And he was saying how using lighter weights actually allows you to contract more muscle fibers and therefore you're going to get greater growth. And um, so I wrote back in context to that uh, TikTok video was, um, yes, it's important to have good mind muscle connection to ensure the right muscles are being properly loaded. However, the weight load has to be heavy enough to actually damage and tear the fibers. Curling a 15 pound dumbbell, which is what this big, huge dude did in the video, uh, just saying like how curling a 15 pound dumbbell with with better mind muscle connection, you know, leads to greater growth. It's absolute bullshit. Um, so I wrote, curling a 15 pound dumbbell, no matter how mentally engaged you are, may recruit more fibers to contract. Because he was saying how with a lighter weight, you can kind of squeeze harder at the top of the lift. Sure, <laughs> you can do that, yeah. But it doesn't necessarily cause the fibers to be damaged. More fibers contracting doesn't lead to more muscle growth. More fibers being damaged leads to more muscle growth. So there's actually a balance that's needed between having good mind-muscle connection, but still a heavy enough weight load to cause physical damage. So these are the type of things that I love having conversations about. But it's also one of the things that makes learning through social media so freaking challenging. Now, I was uh, lucky, and this is going to sound funny in a sense, but I was lucky to start learning all of this before social media. Uh, when I first started learning lifting and stuff when I was 15, 16 years old uh, and 17, uh, we didn't have internet. So, yes, I predate internet. And uh, so we had I had Arnold... And, Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Uh, I eventually got Championship Bodybuilding by Chris Aceto. Great book. Great, great, great book. Um, then I got it, uh, Muscle, like Men's Fitness Magazine and Muscular Development uh, Magazine. I would get those, you know, every month. And I had to experiment a lot. So a lot of my learning came from I would read something and then I'd have a month <laughs> to just like try to experiment with it, play with it, figure it out before the next magazine came out. You know, so then it came out once a month. So I got basically one tidbit of information and then had to l develop that, grind through it, like work it and learn how to tweak and twist it to the ways I needed. So it was actually nice in the sense that it wasn't overwhelming. In a sense, it was underwhelming. And I had to kind of make more out of what I had available to me. The, the, down, the great part of that was I learned a lot by actually doing it. So my knowledge came from the actual 100% physical results that you would see and feel from doing the thing. 
<laughs> you know, and I would put that together for months and months and months, you know, six months to a year. And all of a sudden you really, truly know this information because you've grinded at it every single day. Whereas nowadays there's more information than you have a chance to ever even see. You know, there's more, there's stuff on YouTube now I will never see, even though I watch all this stuff all the time and I love fitness and things, but there's more content than any human being could possibly watch. Now I've watched some of my YouTube channel, like that I've known for years, I've watched thousand plus videos on several channels. So I've watched a lot of stuff. Uh, it's actually the only thing I typically do. <laughs> so if I'm taking a break from work and I want to eat some food, I actually watch training and nutrition videos, which is ridiculous, but I love it. It's very interesting to me all the time. But the information now feels overwhelming because as this person's seeing, you know, they're getting presented information that is very hard to kind of put in relation to other information. So somebody saying, you know, a lighter weight makes you bigger muscles. Eh, mm, eh. <laughs> That's not actually true. A, a properly loaded exercise gets you bigger muscles. That might mean that some people need to go lighter. That might actually mean that some people need to go heavier, you know, or just change different exercise selection. Yeah, I, I watched a girl in our gym one time. She was doing uh, eight pound skull crushers and I asked her what she was doing that for. And she said to build her bench press. And I just felt bad because eight pound skull crushers will not build a bench press. <laughs> so there's no need if somebody can only do skull crushers with eight pound dumbbells and that's their max effort. They should not even be doing skull crushers. Whatever their exercise selection should not include skull crushers. Not at all. Not strong enough to even need that, need that exercise. So there's a lot of context and things and it's hard to kind of put it all in perspective. But what I wanted to kind of talk about in regards to his original statement about it looks like as long as you're consistent, anything works. Now, he he's not saying it that plain. So I know that that's not exactly what he thinks, you know, uh, but that can seem that way is it, it seems as though, you know, there's dozens upon dozens of pathways to get where you want to get. Now, consistency is needed for anything to work. But in order for you to continue to improve, there has to be progressive adjustment. So at first, anything you do consistently works. So if somebody wants to get in better shape and they've never exercised before, just doing, you know, 10 minutes of jumping jacks a day will get them in better shape. But jumping jacks isn't very specific, right? But it'll help them lose some body fat. They'll help get a little more uh, like body strength, body related strength. They'll get stronger ankles, knees, you know, hips. They might improve their balance. They're going to improve a little bit of musculature around um, their lower body joints. They're probably going to feel tighter in their core. You know, just doing jumping jacks if you've never done them before for 10 freaking minutes is freaking awful. That would, <laughs> I'm sure that would wear most people out doing 10 minutes of jumping jacks straight every day. But eventually that will have a limit in regards to what it can do. You know, if I'm trying to build maximal muscle tissue, jumping jacks doesn't work eventually. You know, if I'm trying to get super shredded and super lean, jumping jacks doesn't work eventually. You know, jumping jacks might be good for cardio usage, but what about your food? What are you eating? You know, and that's going to come into play. If I want to get maximal strength, I want to try to squat, you know, twice or three times my body weight. Jumping jacks can help initially, but they're not going to get me all the way. So at first, anything you do consistently works. But eventually you do need more specific things, specific to your goals, and you need to have it being continually uh, improved upon, continually progressed in regards to stimulus for you to continue to see results. So at first, consistency matters more than anything. Doesn't even It doesn't really matter maybe what you do as long as you're consistent at it. But eventually, as you want to get more specific results, what you do definitely does matter. Absolutely definitely does matter. So I see this more in my advanced uh, clients. So I have a powerlifter that I've uh, worked with, and he had, um, he had near an elite total but a ton of injuries and issues and was considering giving up uh, powerlifting, competitive powerlifting. But, you know, we've, we've connected and found each other and we were working together and now he's pain free other than typical kind of like small aches and pains or just fatigue that comes with powerlifting. But there's nothing that's recurring. There's nothing that just, you know, nags at him every single week. Uh, but he's 
pain-free in those injured areas. He has over an elite total. Actually, I, th I think he might have an international elite total. Uh, so he was already exceptional. He already was almost at an elite total. Exceptional strength. Exceptional strength. I'm talking like seven, eight times body weight strength. But he had a ton of injuries because he was just hammering heavier weights and maybe didn't have a specific, like a, a, a good blend of, you know, exercise selection specificity to his issues, plus blending how heavy he should go compared to the rehab type movements and blood flow type movements, like putting all the speci uh, specifics together. So exceptional athlete, exceptional. But he needed specificity of what he was doing to continue to improve. I had another uh, professional baseball pitcher. He uh, got injured, and in the process of trying to rehab, he was cut from his team. He wanted to do tryouts the next season, you know, try to get back on the team. So we actually connected and we worked on his just general full body strength. We worked on explosiveness and we worked on position specific strength. So the different kind of weird positions he would have to get into to throw a baseball and his pitching speed increased. He had like no real, no injuries, no no pain problems whatsoever, and his pitching speed increased. He had already been a professional pitcher, <laughs> but he needed more specific efforts in the gym to get an improvement on his pitching speed. An IFBB pro, and they had placed very well at a national level, but the level but couldn't get a pro card. They couldn't quite get that crisp leanness, but fullness that they needed, and they needed more muscle kind of detail. So with specificity of training, we increased muscle density and achieve that newer, grainier type of leanness, and they got a pro card. Another CrossFit athlete had already got uh, um, achieved like an invite into the CrossFit Games, but they struggled with keeping up with like true max effort strength compared to the other athletes, and they had nagging joint annoyances, and it was kind of bummed for them because they had kind of gotten on the cusp of their, uh, you know, kind of uh, sport being a top elite level, but they were just kind of holding them back, holding them back. But with specificity, hit all-time new strength PRs, and all the pains went away related to joint-specific pains and issues. So, consistency will get results, even if you have no clue what you're doing, <laughs> but it'll only get you results so far. You know, if I'm flabby, kind of pudgy soft, you know, 185, and I get down to 165 and I have ripped abs, and that looks really good on, on TikTok and Instagram and stuff, great. Does it take much to go from 185 to 165 with ripped abs? Not really. You don't really have to be super specific in what you do. You just have to burn off some body fat, eat enough food to maintain your muscle tissue, and do a crap ton of ab training. You know, so it depends on what, how far you want to go. The further you want to go, the more specific you have to be in your programming. And that includes nutrition, training, rehab, supplementation, I mean, all the aspects. The further you want to go, the more detailed you have to be. You have to be consistent at all levels. Beginner, intermediate, advanced, you have to be consistent. You know, you have to be consistent even at dumb things to get something out of them, <laughs> you know? And it's, it's, I don't mean it to be rude, but you know, at first, if you tell somebody as I'm trying to lose weight, I'm doing 10, 10 minutes of jumping jacks every day, they're going to say congratulations, but they're going to think that, that, you know, kind of dumb or like, geez, isn't there anything better than that? Like, that's what you're doing, you know, but it's going to work. And then all of a sudden you're going to see like a friend of theirs say, well, I'm going to do that because they got results. And then all of a sudden it's a fad of everybody doing 10 minutes of jumping jacks every day. And yes, for most people that will see progress. But eventually, that's going to plateau, and eventually, you're going to need more details. So pretty much anything works initially. But eventually, the results will plateau. They plateau earlier with the least, like the less specific to what you want uh, things that you do. <laughs> you know, so if I want to become a professional bodybuilder, but I'm doing jumpy jacks, that's going to plateau a lot faster than if I just want to be lean in a bathing suit next summer and I do jumping jacks. You know, so eventually the results will plateau 
and you'll need to find something of higher quality. And that includes programming for nutrition, training, supplements, uh, recovery methods, all those kind of things. And you need that in order to see continued and new results. So it is challenging when you look online and it looks like everybody is successful with everything. Always remember that you're, you're not seeing the people who weren't successful. <laughs> Nobody posts that. So you're only seeing the people that it somehow worked for. Maybe they were genetic freaks. Maybe they were doing the nutrition when somebody else wasn't doing nutrition, but they don't talk about nutrition. Maybe they're taking a bunch of drugs. They never talk about that. You know, maybe, and I think I talked about this in a recent podcast, but maybe it takes over their whole life. Maybe they have to spend three, four, five hours a day doing this and they don't have good relationships. And it's the only thing they do all day because they get paid for it, you know, through advertising. And that's, that's also why they want to make sure it looks like it always works. There's so many factors that it is challenging to know what works. Um, One of the best things I can say is what you want to achieve, go look and see what most people do for that. So if I want to be a professional bodybuilder, what do most professional bodybuilders do? If I want to be a, you know, an elite level power, what do most elite level power do? You're always going to find people who are out of the box. You know, so if you, if you look at 10 resources, like 10 athletes, 10 people, uh, and you say, okay, out of the 10, there's six that are doing this, two that are doing that. One's doing some crazy crap and the other one's doing some crazy thing over here. Do what the six do, (laughs) you know, find the common denominator among the people. So if you check out 10 people and it looks like like six, seven, eight of them do this one thing, then do that thing. If there's one person who seems to say, you know, they go against the grain and they're able to see results, but nobody else says you should be able to do it this way. That's probably not true. (laughs) They're probably doing something extra to be able to get those results, but they want to sell you a product or they want to, you know, try to seem more important or fancy or, you know, get more clicks and views and that way they can uh, kind of pay their bills or whatnot. So the more radical somebody's thoughts are, they're probably less likely to be truthful with what they're doing. That's just something to kind of keep in mind as a general thing. So uh, at initially, everything works, but eventually you do need more specifics if you want to continue to improve. Uh, three podcasts I think that would be helpful. Uh, the, the client had mentioned uh, fasting. You know, people getting good results for fat loss through fasting. It's true that initially fasting can be helpful, uh, but fasting for a long-term solution, it is not. (laughs) Uh, Podcast 1,411, so just roughly, you know, two weeks ago or so, I mean, four weeks ago, uh, I did a podcast on fasting for fat loss. So podcast 1,411, two weeks ago, sorry, I can't do math right now. But um, 1,411 is a Q&A podcast titled Fasting for Fat Loss. That'd be a great one to learn how fasting does work initially, but it's definitely not a long-term solution. We also have podcast 1,377. It's a training podcast titled Identifying a Good Program. So that way you can see if what you're doing actually is good and if it has, you know, potential to be a a long-term type approach. And then we also always have podcast 1,232, which is a nutrition podcast titled Start Here. So if you want to know how to set up your nutrition so you can make sure that that program is set up correctly and will continue to progress with you, podcast 1,232 will help towards that. Awesome. Well, I hope this was helpful. I think it was kind of fun to kind of talk through. If anybody ever has any questions or they want to send, you know, some social media videos my way and I'll ha- I'll be happy to make a podcast to explain what you see. But I think it's cool to have a resource in which if you have questions about training and nutrition that you can get those answered and we can kind of have a discussion about it. So I appreciate everybody listening. Just always remember that this podcast is for you. (laughs) So anything that you want to learn about, just let me know and then uh, we'll discuss it. Awesome. Well, if you like today's podcast or the podcast in general, please consider sharing the podcast. You can do so by sharing a link on social media that reaches the most amount of people, but even just a conversation with a friend. If the podcast is helpful into your life, try to help it get into more people's lives so we can just help more and more people. Thank you to the patrons of the podcast, people financially support the podcast. The podcast is well over $1,000 a year for hosting costs. I give an hour to it every single day. I try to keep it for free. I want to keep this going. And it's only thanks to the donations that it makes any business sense whatsoever to do this. <laughs> so so thank you for the donations. They all go 100% towards the hosting costs. Uh, if you do want to donate, you can do it so at our website, which is www.brutalirongym.com. We have an option there for a one-time donation, monthly donation, yearly donation. Anything you can give is greatly appreciated. Thank you.
Also, if you like the information we share in our podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. If you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, anything you want to know, let us know in our email at brutalirongym at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.